Let's take a closer look at section 1.2 of the crash course. Logical variables and conditional execution. The various different IF constructions are the hardest thing for the beginning programmer to understand. YAR Basic is quite a forgiving language, but for IF blocks you have to get it right. All programming languages do IF blocks exactly the same way as YAR Basic. So this somehow represents the minimum of logical clarity which we humans need to communicate properly with computers. There are three possible IF constructions. The single line construction, whose formal definition is given here, but which can be thought of informally as follows. The single block construction, whose formal definition is this, but which can be thought of informally like this. And finally, the multi-block construction, which informally looks like this. Let's look at each of these three constructions in turn. The single line if construction. Here are both the formal and the informal definitions, where the informal definition can be read out loud as follows. If blah blah. We use this form when we want to do just one simple thing. For example, if a is less than zero, print a is less than zero. Note, there is no then in this construction. If you typed this, if a is less than zero, then print a is less than zero, YAR basic will give you an error, complaining that there is no phi, that's short for end if. Next, the single block if construction. Here are both the formal and informal definitions, where the informal definition can be read out loud as follows. If blah, then blah blah blah, end if. We use this form when we want to do several things. For example, if a is less than zero, then print a is less than zero, print please enter something positive, end if. If you forget to type the final end if, the computer will not know where you mean the block to end. For example, if a is less than zero, then print a is less than zero. Print, please enter something positive. YAR basic will give an error, complaining that there is no phi, short for end if. Finally, the multi-block if construction. Here are the formal and informal definitions, and the informal definition can be read out as follows. If blah, then blah blah blah. Else if blah, then blah blah blah. Else blah blah blah. End if. We use this form when we have a list of mutually exclusive possibilities. This is the hardest of the three constructions to master, but also the most useful. For example, if a is greater than zero, then print a is greater than zero. Else if a is less than zero, then print a is less than zero. Else print a is equal to zero. End if. This example shows that you do not have to spell out the last condition in full detail. You can just dump all other cases there with the final else. But if that last condition is easy enough to spell out, then you're welcome to do so. Specifying the last condition like this may make no difference to the computer, but it may help make your meaning much clearer to another human being reading your code. But you can easily imagine situations where that last condition is not easy to specify exactly. For example, if it's Monday, then play football. Else, if it's raining, then play squash else play computer games, end if. Now that last condition, that last else, corresponds to not Monday and not raining. Now that's impossibly difficult to specify positively. 
I mean, it means it's Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or and it's sunny or it's cloudy or it's windy. There's just too many things to spell out. So it's much better just to say else in all other circumstances. Now, you may be wondering, why should we bother with the complexities of a multi-block when we could simply type the following three single line ifs? If a is greater than zero, print a is greater than zero. If a is less than zero, print a is less than zero. If a equals zero, print a is equal to zero. Well, in this very simple example, you would be correct. The above three single line ifs achieve the same as the multi-block ifs which we saw earlier. But in more complicated cases, the power of the multi-block if construction becomes clear. For example, suppose we have the following conditions where the numbers are constrained according to their numbers of digits, which involve two inequalities, a lower and an upper bound. So 1 is less than or equal to a is less than 10, means a is a one-digit number, or 10 is less than or equal to a is less than 100, which means a has two digits, and 100 is less than or equal to a is less than 1,000, which means a has three digits. This is really easy to code as follows, because each condition in the multi-block is only applied if all of the earlier ones have failed. So we simply get the following. If a is less than 10, then print a is a single digit number. Else if a is less than 100, then print a is a double digit number. Else if a is less than 1000, then print a is a three digit number. End if. Also for this example, if a is greater than or equal to 1000, then nothing happens at all which can be the case if there is no final else. But, just as the multi-block if is more powerful, there are also more ways to make mistakes when typing them. For example, can you see the error in the following code? Take a moment to think about this. Pause the video here if you need more time. It's missing the then in the final else if. Can you see the error in the following code? Take a moment to think about this. Pause the video here if you need more time. The final else should not have a condition. You need to either delete the a less than a thousand if you don't really need it, or else beef the line up to the full form, else if a less than a thousand then, if you do need the condition. Finally, can you see the error in the following code? Hint, it's in a different line to the previous examples. Take a moment to think about this. Pause the video here if you need more time. The else if should not have a space. You need to type it all as one word, else if. Otherwise, your basic has difficulty telling this apart from a simple else. With so many different ways to get multi-block ifs wrong, is there any way to guarantee to get them right? Yes, there is, as we shall see in the following slides. Tips for getting multi-block if construction right. 
Step one, type out the blank template exactly as it appears opposite with all the blahs. That is the, the dot dot dots literally typed as dots. Absolutely no details, just the bare template itself. Step two, fill in all the logical conditions next. In particular, decide whether you want just a final else with nothing or a full up final else if blah then. Step three, type in the actual actions, the dot dot dots which you want to perform under each condition. By typing out the template literally as dot dot dots and only then filling in the conditions and finally the actions. You can be sure to get code which runs error-free every time. The same tips apply to the other if constructions too. Type the templates first with all the blahs, the dot dot dots, then fill in the conditions, then fill in the actions.